Tuskers and elephants. These gentle giants have always been an inseparable aspect of Sri Lanka's natural and cultural heritage. Elephants are considered as noble beasts and they have always been associated with royalty and religion in the culture of this island. Elephants are known for their intelligence, sharp memory and mightiness. Thus, a great number of carvings and sculptures of elephants and tuskers among Sinhalese arts and architecture could be found. Also, the large number of folk poems and tales that are woven around elephants and folk beliefs are evidences to the close relationship between these wonderful creatures and the Sinhalese culture. In Buddhist literature the Buddha is compared to a majestic elephant Gaja and also the Bodhisattva is symbolized through a white baby Tusker who enters the womb of Queen Maya. The Jataka tales that depict the past lives of the Bodhisattva reveal how Buddha was born as a noble elephant or Tusker in many births. Also, the Tusker Paraliya is a famous Tusker in Buddhist literature which took good care of Buddha by attending to him. According to Sri Lanka's folk religion, God Salmon's vehicle is known to be a white Tusker. So is the vehicle of local deity Ayanayaka. Also, the elephant-headed god, Ganapathi or Pulayar is one of the oldest known Sri Lankan deities. In ancient times, elephants and tuskers were used in battles and the South Asian war elephant was much popular among foreign lands, especially in ancient Rome. Sri Lanka used to export elephants during ancient times. The war elephant depicted in coins of Alexander the Great, Porus and Roman coins can be identified as Asian elephants. Historical and archaeological evidences reveal that these Asian elephants were popular as great war elephants as they could be trained and tamed well. Since ancient times, the royal tusker of the monarch was chosen to parade the Daladar Perihara carrying the relic casket. During ancient times all tuskers in the island was considered as property of the Sinhalese monarch and killing a tusker or an elephant was considered as a grave crime and the penalty was death. Let us now get familiar with the mighty tuskers who carried the relic casket at Daladar Perihara's and some of the notable tuskers and elephants at the Daladar Perihara. Out of all the tamed tuskers of the country, only few are chosen as suitable enough to carry the relic casket. Not only their physical looks but also their personality and intelligence is considered. Therefore, these tuskers are believed to be blessed noble creatures. After 1815 a permit was issued to capture wild elephants. Once captured, they were sold. Later these wild elephants were tamed and trained by those who bought them. This was how the wild elephants were captured and trained since the 19th century in Sri Lanka. Aristocrats and politicians would buy young or baby elephants and tuskers as they were considered a sign of wealth and power. Gifting these beasts to the Temple of the Tooth was an age-old tradition followed by the aristocrats and political leaders of the country. Also the Temple of Tooth was gifted a number of tuskers from India, Myanmar and Thailand as a token of honor, friendship and gratitude. State Minister of Wildlife Protection Wimalwira Disanayaki has promulgated regulations under the Fauna and Flora Protection Ordinance for the protection, well-being and regularization of registration of tamed elephants. The regulations prohibit the use of forceful and painful methods of controlling the animal who turn violent and allows only reasonable steps using minimum force in keeping with the traditional methods to be taken to control such an elephant. The regulations spell out the kind of vehicle an elephant can be transported in and limits the speed of such a vehicle to 30 kmph. Elephants in captivity will be entitled to retirement from any work if a veterinary surgeon or a registered traditional doctor who treats elephants determines that the animal is unfit for work. Tamed elephants will also need to be subject to a full medical examination by a veterinary surgeon or a registered traditional doctor who treats elephants once in six months and this should be recorded in the treatment history sheet. The regulations also detail the standard goad with a tip, tick or knife which is recognized as traditional tools which can be used to train, control or to take care of an elephant. 
No sharp weapons, fire or any anesthetic drug shall be used for such purpose. Any pregnant elephant, any she-elephant having a calf less than two years of age, any elephant in must, any sick elephant, or any elephant over 60 years of age shall not be engaged in any work or other activity. The regulations also prohibit the separation of any calf elephant of less than five years of age from its mother. Those who own elephants are required to have a land more than three acres in extent in order to take care of such an elephant, allow such elephant to stay in rest and to tie such elephant when in must so as not to cause any damage to live sea or any property. In case of more than one elephant, one acre each shall be added for each such elephant. Those who wish to register and obtain a license for a tamed elephant are required to obtain a license from the Director General of Wildlife with 10,000 rupees paid to the Wildlife Preservation Fund, as the license fee. There is provision to cancel the license of owners who violate the regulations.